Good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Antonio Kwasi. I'm a PhD student from University Nangia Brugua in Ivory Coast. The supervisors of my thesis are Emma Asema from Nangia Brugua and Christophe Bigot and Olivier Gibert from CIRAD. It is a pleasure for me to present you our work. The title of this presentation is Prediction of Sensory Attributes of Boiled Plantain by Instrumental Parameters. The plantain is a staple food for many people in Africa. In Ivory Coast, per capita consumption is 70 kilograms per year. In this country, many local varieties exist, but they are sensible to diseases with a low productivity. Also, some hybrids issued from some genetic improvement programs exist and exhibit good agronomic qualities, but that are not appreciated and adopted by consumers. On another side, the literature leaks some sensory description of boiled plantains, and we are still not able to predict the sensory quality of boiled plantain with instrumental parameters. So the aim of this study was to identify the sensory quality indicators of boiled plantains that breeders can use for their banana improvement programs. In this presentation, we will present our strategic and method to reach our objectives. After control ripening, the banana pulp was cooked, was cooked well for 10, 20, and 30 minutes, respectively for ripe, semi-ripe, and full and green ripe stages. After cooling at room temperature, sensory analysis was carried out at 60 degrees Celsius. On the same day, a puncture and TPA test are carried out simultaneously on over banana from the same hand. This slide illustrates the importance of monitoring the tasting temperature to score texture of boiled products. On figure one, as expected, the film that degreases with the time of cooking and increases after cooking when banana cools down to room temperature. As illustrates on second figure, three plantains exhibit different firmness at 60 and 50 and 30 degrees. If the temperature of the products is not controlled at the time of tasting, the grit variation in firmness can be observed between panelists for the same product, and then they evaluate the product differently from each over. On over and the overhand, if the dating are down at 60 degree and the instrumental analysis at 30 degree, then the difference in texture measured will certainly not be the same. The preparation of a sample for sensory analysis is a critical point. As illustrated on picture one and this table, samples cooking time were precisely monitored and synchronized using lab timers to allow panelists to have samples on the time and to be sure that samples were tasted at the same temperature. On picture two, after removing its ends, the cooked pulps were standardized, were standardized by cutting into several three centimeters a long section. On picture three, each section was saved to the judges randomly. On picture four, given the strong influence of temperature on the sensory perception, a probe was introduced into the core of a control section for each product. It aims to monitor the temperature of each pulp section during cooling stage. 
on picture five, when the temperature reaches 60 degrees at the core, a start signal was delivered to the judges for sensory evaluation in order to get all samples taste at the same temperature. The panelists were trained according to the method described in the RTBA food deliverable entitled training a panel in sensory analysis and implementing descriptive tests. This table shows the different sensory attributes used for the description of boiled plantain. As you can see, we are retained a small number of attributes, six here, to avoid a panelist tiredness. For evaluation of fameness, mildness, and stinkiness, taste by sweetness and moist feel in the mouth, judges were asked to evaluate the intensity of attributes on a scale from zero for very weak to 10 for very strong. Given the difference in the showiness perception among the panelists, we have proceeded differently for this parameter. Each of panelists was requested to count the number of shoes prior to swallowing and not the corresponding value. The value was then normalized in the zero to 10 range, zero being the lowest dimensionless value of all products and all panelists and 10 the highest. Panelists were requested to shoe a fixed quantity of sample. Puncture and texture profile analysis were performed simultaneously on pieces of pulp of plantain from the same banana sample. Two cylindrical sample were removed from the remaining half portion of the fruit pulps for the double compression. Two cylindrical sample, two cylindrical cycle, each corresponding to 20% of sample strain were performed using a probe of 60 millimeters in diameter at a constant speed of one millimeter by second. First time curves were recorded by the soft way of the instruments, by, by the soft way of instruments. For the puncture test, the maximal puncture force has been measured. These two tests were performed the same day as for sensory analysis. During pulp cooling, the temperature was monitored. This slide illustrates how TPA parameters have been computed from the first time curve. Hardness is the maximum compressive force at the first compression cycle. Cohesiveness is the ratio of the area of the second compression and the area of the first compression. Springiness is the height to which a deformed sample return after the removal of compressive force. Adhesiveness is the negative area between the first and second compression. Several statistical analyses were performed to describe and predict the sensory quality of boiled plantain at different stages of ripeness. Principal component analy analyses PCA were performed to illustrate the sensory diversity of boiled plantain. Simple and multiple linear regression using stepwise were performed to predict sensory attributes with the instrument parameters. To predict the sensory attributes by instrumental parameters, we used two sets, one for calibration with 27 sample and one for validation with eight samples. Calibration performance were evaluated with coefficients of determination and the root mean square error of calibration. 
the robustness of validation was evaluated by the root mean square error of validation. As illustrated here, the two first components, PC1 and PC2, represent the sensory cartography of boiled protein with 95% of the variance explained. The first axis, PC1, represents 88% of total variance. It opposes firmness, showiness, and mildness to sweetness and moist. The PC1 axis clearly separates varieties according to their stage of ripeness. Firmness, showiness, and mildness of boiled plantains decrease with the increasing of ripeness, whereas moist and sweetness increasing with ripeness. The second axis accounted for 7% of PC variance designed stickiness. Designed stickiness. Boiled plantains were perceived as sticky at the intermediate stage of ripeness. All the varieties have been classified according to the stage of ripeness, except the alpha ripe hybrid cooking fear classified as ripe. At each ripeness stage, difference in sensory attributes have been observed among varieties, but the varietal difference were less marked than difference between the stages of ripeness. Firmness was well predicted by instrumental texture parameters measured by compression or puncture tests. On this picture one and two, you can see the good adjustment of calibration and validation data in firmness prediction with puncture force and by hardness. The cohesiveness of the, the coefficient of determination of 0 0.80 means that 80% of variability of firmness is explained by puncture force. Hence, the root mean square error lower than one means that prediction error is lower than one on a scale of zero to 10, either 10 percent. Also, shoeiness, mildness, and moistness were well predicted by instrumental texture parameter. For shoeiness prediction, the coefficient of determination is 0.84. And the root mean square error is 0 0.5. The best prediction of shoeiness was most probably due to the way this attribute was evaluated. The prediction of mildness and moist by hardness and to a lesser extent of stringiness were even more unexpected. But the film fruits were also the mealy and the least moist, this prediction could be due to the collinearity between these sensory attributes. We expect that stickiness may be predicted by adhesiveness. No trend was observed. No trend was observed. Perhaps it was difficult for the panelists to objectively score for the entire scale for stickiness or Probably the instrumental method is not the best way to assess a stickiness attributes. Relaxation test may be more suitable than puncture or compression tests. In conclusion, puncture and TPA tests are relevant methodology to predict sensory attributes of boiled plantain like firmness, hardness, and showiness. The success of the different prediction was due to one, the good training of the panelists and the consensual definition of the sensory attributes. Two, the strict monitoring of the temperature along tasting. And three, the wide diversity of products evaluated, allowing us to make full use of the rating scale 
for each descriptor. Finally, our method could serve as a reference for the fuel investigation, and in particular for cooking cooked products requiring to be tasted at an optimal temperature. This study was published in the International Journal of Food Science Technology in the special issue. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you, Antonin. Thank you very much for this very well illustrated and pedagogic presentation. And thanks for the effort for translating and speaking in English because I know that you're a French speaker. So thanks a lot for the effort. Okay, um, so you. as as I mentioned before, the, the content and the scope of this webinar goes beyond the sensory att attributes of boiled plantain because the approach and, and the method used in particular statistical ana analysis described by Antonin in, uh, in his presentation should be applied to the, to the other product profile in RTB Foods project. Um, because as you, as you all know, we are studying 11 product profile, 11 food food product from RTBs in RTB foods and boiled plantain is one of them. Um, so before we start with questions, so get ready with questions. <laughs> um, okay. I would like to, to ask uh, um, your supervisors or maybe Christophe, uh, because you're yes. online, um, what would be the, the perspectives in the perspective of application of this, uh, this approach to in RTB foods to other products, um, including other products on plantain, which would be the next step? How do you see that in the framework of RTB foods? Uh, for Christophe, for me? Yes. Okay. Um, this, uh, this work was uh, a proof of concept to, to show that uh, if you uh, you apply good methodology of sensory analysis uh, by training uh, panelists, by monitoring temperature, and by using uh, contrasted uh, sample, contrasted variety, you can have very good prediction of uh, sensory attributes by instrumental parameters. Uh, in particular for boiled products like banana plantain, like boiled cassava or boiled yam. So I think it's, uh, it's possible to apply this methodology, this uh, instrumental uh, parameters for this kind of uh, product. And now I think for boiled plantain, we, uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can validate this, uh, this, um, this predict predictor, so uh, uh, puncture force or hardness, to uh, assess the firmness, the showiness of boy plantain uh, from Cameroon or from other countries. Thank you, Christophe. Uh, Olivier, do you want to add something? Olivier Gibert from CIRAD Montpellier. Uh, um, I don't know if I can properly add any elements to what was delivered by Antona and uh, what, uh, what was uh, indicated, reported by Christophe. Maybe one other direction of the work might be later to try to optimize the, the texture of the product in order to guarantee the quality. Uh, by consumers means that uh, also it might be interesting to try to revise the way the plantain are cooked in order to get such uh, uh, sensory characteristic that we were able to show with uh, the present work. Thank you, Eglantay. Thank you. Thank you, Olivier. Okay, I see one question from, um, from Suzanne. Suzanne is asking how many, it's not roots, but fingers, uh, Suzanne, because we're talking about bananas. So how many fingers were tested for instrument and analysis per genotype? How many fingers per genotype, per variety, let's, uh, let's say? Uh, we, are, 
we 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 are testing uh, thirty plantains, two cooking hybrids, and one uh, banana dessert to in uh, our experience. I don't know if I okay. So first, thirteen plantains from different variety. You mean yes. Uh, in, in the question in fact, is how many how many repetition by uh, genotype? How many banana you are analyzing by genotype by sample? How many fingers? Yes. Uh, Antonin, you answer or, or me? Uh, you can answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in fact, there is a uh, 16 um, variety, but for each variety, you have three uh, stage of ripeness: um, green, mid ripe, and uh, full ripe. And for just for some of variety, uh, if you can uh, show um, Antonin, we have uh, three replicates by sensory, but not for. Uh, not for all the variety. Uh, um, Antonin, could you uh, put the, the PCA? Please. Okay. Uh, is, here you can see, for example, yes, that uh, wait, PLGK uh, GK. Uh -huh. is uh, represented in, uh, in here. here. And you and, can uh, see. Uh, KIP uh, G0. Uh, uh, you can see with this uh, replicate yeah. the variability uh, intra intra variety intra varietal. Um, I don't uh, the, the variability intra varietal inside uh, bit, between between the same variety. You you understand? <laughs> Yes, that was another part of the question. Within Suzanne. Variety. Yes, Suzanne is asking whether uh, there is a lot of variety, uh, finger to finger variety, um, variability, sorry. Is there a lot of variability between two fingers? I, I, I assume from the same uh, variety. Between two fingers. Uh, there is no uh, variability be uh, on one. And okay. on yeah. the bunch, you have several uh, ends. Mm -hmm. For each end, you have uh, about uh, 10, uh, 15 mm -hmm. fingers. But between fingers, for the same end, you are not uh, variability. So is for plantain, is uh, uh, it's easier uh, uh, to to analyze. Uh, uh, to, to, to do uh, some uh, sensory analysis with, uh, with uh, one end. Okay. Because between a finger, there is not uh, really heterogeneous uh, variability. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks, Christophe. Thanks, Antonin. Um, okay. Another question from Thierry, Thierry Tran. Uh, so you have tested three different cooking times. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. What yes. was the effect of the cooking time on the sensory perception and on the texture? Uh, Ignatin, you can translate for me. Oui, tu, vous avez cuit à différentes, euh, fin, durant, après, fin, 10 minutes, à 20 minutes et à 30 minutes. Vous avez fait des analyses sensorielles à ces trois temps-là. Quel est oui. l'effet du temps de cuisson sur... Euh, sur, les, sur la perception sensorielle par les panélistes et sur la texture du plantain. L'effet de euh, différents temps de cuisson. Je vais essayer de répondre en français. Peut-être vous pourrez traduire pour eux. Yes. Sous le contrôle, bien sûr, de, de mes encadrants. Je pense que normalement, après la cuisson, pour nous, les plantains, euh, à ces trois temps de cuisson, normalement, le temps de cuisson ne devait pas avoir une forte influence sur la perception sensorielle. Parce qu'ils étaient tous cuits et normalement comestibles à ce temps de cuisson. 
Ouais, donc, donc, cristaux, même ouais. après, après 10 minutes, le, et le plantain est cuit C'est une autre question de Thierry. Est-ce qu'il n'est pas… Il est pas euh, euh, non, après 10 minutes, normalement, le plantain, le plantain cuit à 10 minutes euh, était à maturité maximale. Ok. Et ceux qui à 20 minutes étaient à maturité intermédiaire et ceux qui à okay. 30 minutes à, à la maturité verte. Ok. Donc, du coup, fact, oui, en, en, se, en, se, en se fondant sur la littérature et des tests préliminaires que nous avons réalisés, voilà, nous avons donc jugé utile de faire consommer ces bananes-là après ces temps de cuisson-là. Okay, if I got it well, Christophe, you can confirm that there were different cooking times for the different sta uh, state, uh, status of uh, maturity, of uh, ripening, for the, is that, uh, is that correct, Christophe? You didn't, you didn't test it three different cooking times. Uh, for, for, for each uh, stage of ripeness, yes. we have just one time of cooking. Okay. For banana, it's 30 minutes. For ripe, uh, fully ripe, Uh, stage uh, eight uh, days. It's only ten minutes. We we adapt time of cooking because if you we if we we have decided to to cook only at twenty minutes, so it's not enough for green uh, banana, but it's too too much for ripe uh, banana. Okay. And as, uh, at as the end, at the end. What is important uh, that uh, we, we measure uh, sensory uh, attributes and uh, textural uh, uh, parameters uh, on cook uh, banana. Of course, okay. now we, we need to, to regress um, uh, physical uh, parameters at, uh, at raw materials with a cook product. It, it will be, it will be uh, more difficult to interpret this uh, prediction. But for on, on cooked banana, there is no problem to predict. Okay, Thierry, do you want to, to, to add something, to ask something more? Uh, yeah, just thank you. That, that answers the question very quickly, clearly. So basically, the, the time of cooking is uh, is adapted to the degree of ripeness to be optimum. Let's let's say optimum cooking time for each degree of ripeness. Thanks. Thank you. Um, a question from Bolanle: uh, How was evaluated? the mealiness only in, ma in the mouth? And is that the way that it is evaluated tra traditionally? Mealiness, is it only in mouth? Yes, yes. <clears throat> uh, for banana plantain, it's uh, at the opposite of uh, moist impression. There is a good, uh, there is a negative correlation between moist and mealiness. Uh, but uh, if you see the definition, it's not the same, but uh, uh, there is a good cor negative correlation between them. Okay, and Michael is asking, uh, how was the mealiness evaluated by the panel panelists? Because he, he, he see that the cohesiveness was used to indicate mealiness from the instrumental analysis. So how was the mealiness evaluated by the pan panelists? I think the definition is quite clear, or the protocol evaluation here. Uh, Ignatin, you please uh, translate for me. Comment la, la, la mealiness a été est évaluée par les panelists? Uh, Antonin, the, the, the definition. Okay. The okay. protocol. The pro uh, well, I think, is it uh, enough? Uh, Yes. Yes, Michael. A piece of uh, mm. banana in uh, it's uh, asked to judges to put a piece of banana in in our in mouth and assess the preference of millions. 
particle during chewing. Michael, does it answer your question? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, well, uh, I saw that um, I just the mouth feel alone was that uh, sufficient enough to to evaluate meaningness from the from the sensory uh, uh, from the panelist. So I, I was just curious if that was uh, sufficient enough to to indicate meaningless in the, in the fruit. It was clear that uh, cohesiveness was used in the instrumental uh, analysis. Uh, was there anything like uh, ant fuel uh, included in that, or it was just limited to, to mouth uh, fuel? Thank you. So I, I think, uh, yes, I think it, you, Christoph answered this uh, this part of the question. It's only mouth uh, mouth uh, assessment, but uh, I think this question is similar or quite similar to the one asked by Bolanle about uh, is uh, does it mean that cohesiveness in instrumental measurement is the same as milliness in the mouth? Donc en français, est-ce que donc oui. ce que je comprends, tu comprends, Christophe? Oui, oui. But uh, uh, Antonin, could you put the um... The prediction at the end. Uh, the, this slide. There is no. There was no correlation between uh, milliness in mouth by panelists, cohesiveness uh, measured by uh, texture profile analysis. Le suivant, s'il te plaît. Le tableau. Yes, but you can you can see here uh, that uh, that. Uh, we can predict mealiness by two uh, TPA uh, parameters, hardness yes. and stringiness, with a good uh, coefficient of determination. But um, this uh, prediction uh, 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 make uh, some uh, question about it. Uh, perhaps it is not a real uh, relation. Perhaps is, uh, there is a, perhaps there is a collinearity between the, between the instrumental uh, parameters and uh, the sensory attributes of meaningness. So we need some uh, some uh, some study to, to confirm. The, this uh, relationship uh, between meaningness and uh, texture parameters is not easy for for panelists to measure this uh, this uh, par this uh, attribute. Attributes. Uh, so um, here uh, with a French panelist, we consider meaningness as uh, like uh, mil. Come uh, uh, on. With with mill, how are we? Perhaps for other projects, uh, perhaps for for you, Bolanle or Michael, uh, the definition of milliness perhaps is uh, like different. As flowering, as as flower. Yes, uh, yes, as flowering. Yes. By flowering. Uh, thank you, Christoph. Thank you for the answer. It's clear now because I was just wondering, but the way you have explained, I understand it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other question for uh, Antonin? There was uh, one question from Cedric. Cedric was asking whether after 30 minutes of cooking, is an ripe plantain edible? I think the, the answer is yes, but uh, I'll let you answer. Après 30 minutes de cuisson, est-ce qu'un plantain non mûr est comestible? Oui. Yes. 
So Cedric, oui. yes. Every samples were uh, uh, edible. Were edible for this uh, study. Okay. And there's a, a because we a choose a optimal cooking time. Yes, and there's a question in the chat that I think uh, we have already answered. Uh, what is the effect of cooking time on sensory perception for the same stage of ripeness? But I think you, you haven't assessed the effect of cooking time um, on, on, on the same sta uh, stage of ripeness, isn't it? You haven't tested different cooking times. You have uh, already chosen one cooking time per uh, ripeness stage. Yes, exactly, yes. Okay. It's, it's possible to, to do that. Mm -hmm. But... Um, uh, well, yes, it was not the, the objective of this uh, study. Mm -hmm. Because we would like to predict uh, sensory attributes by uh, textural parameters, but uh, this kind of study is possible too. Okay, thank you. <coughs> there is a question. What, what is the effect of age on this, uh, of age? What age? Age of, of fruit? No, I don't understand. I think it's also ripeness. Uh, Elizabeth? Elizabeth? May you? Yes, ask? yes, I'm here. Hi. Okay, so let me explain. Yeah, thank you very much. Happy New Year to everyone. So normally, when you have real mature plantain, you know, and then it has, the boiling is a bit different. Now, so I'm just asking, at what age was these samples used? You know, maybe, or uh, just were selected. I don't know, I just, I'm just curious about the age of the plantain that was used. You know, they refer to the maturity. Thank you. Uh, Ignatin? We is, is it clear? Yeah. Yes, it's kind of clear, Elizabeth. I'm trying to talk, to translate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Je pense que c'est une question sur l'effet finalement de la de la maturité sur les ah. la prédiction. Finalement, ah, okay. quel effet? Oui, oui. Ah, mais je crois que ça rejoint la question précédente, non? Où Christophe a dit que c'était pas trop l'objet en fait de, de l'étude. Yeah. Uh, we we have uh, tested uh, some prediction only with um, uh, with fruits at uh, mid ripe, uh, and and we 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 have found similar prediction of firmness showing yeah. by uh, by text, by punter first and harness. only for uh, for fruits at uh, mid ripe uh, stage. Uh, is it uh, okay with this uh, answer? Um, maybe um, what I'm just saying is that see, when I have plantains that is fully matured, when I buy my plantain elsewhere, some may be maybe eight months after harvesting, some may be maybe ten months after harvesting, uh, one year after harvesting, for example, just for example. And then when samples are taken for the same variety, the cooking will be different because some when normally when there is storm, a particular plantain that will cook, you know, with a, a longer period of time. When it's young and it, it becomes soft even quickly. So that's why I'm asking whether this would have maybe compounded results or something. But if you have the same age, then then that should not be an issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Christoph. Um, any other comments? Uh, Dominique, you were raising your hand. I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Antona, and congratulations for the publication. 
Okay, merci. I want to inform you that we are planning some trial in Ivory Coast, uh, directly with uh, Senera and uh, Nangia Bogwa. Mm -hmm. uh, Michel Amami is in charge of the project for, for Côte d'Ivoire, and uh, we are planning to evaluate more than 46 uh, plantain clones planted in two uh, localizations with the collaboration of uh, Didier Beguet, Beguet, who is now mm -hmm. Nangia Brogua, and with Gérard Go, who just received the texturometer in, in, in Cameroon. But we are planning for the next harvest some uh, trial, and we hope that you will be able to participate okay. in this trial in, in Côte d'Ivoire. And this is a new uh, application of your work for next year, next year evaluation. Thank you very much. And we hope also that uh, Cameroon, I see Cedric, Cameroon and Nigeria, who, uh, who we are working with uh, CARBAP and ITA, will implement this uh, textural analysis for plantain. Michael, you are here. Maybe it's very important to, to read carefully the publication and to see how they correlate panel analysis with uh, instrumental measurement in the lab. This is a very, very good uh, paper. And uh, I hope that we will use the protocol for uh, Cameroon, Nigeria, and, uh, and uh, Côte d'Ivoire in plantain, but maybe also we can uh, use it for yam or for, for cassava in, in with some modification. Thank you very much for the work. Congratulations. Okay, thank you, thank you Dominique. Uh, I, I just want to say something. Uh, Antonin will be present his uh, thesis. Uh, uh, will present uh, his thesis. Uh, no, not at the end of the year, but we hope uh, uh, before before June. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's. Uh, Okay. Will it be a, a, a face? What? Face to face or by Zoom? Uh, we don't know. We, uh, we don't know. But we will be there. <laughs> you? Yes, everybody. Okay. If it's okay. by Zoom, we will share the link. If it's public, yes, we can share the link with the community. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's good to know. But uh, I think it will be in French. Oh, okay. So for the. Oui, voilà. uh, so <laughs> good for <laughs> Well, thank you. I think it's time for for closing our our webinar. So thanks a lot, uh, Antonin. Good luck for the for the next month. I think. Thank you. Be working a lot and very hard, so good luck. Uh, congratulations again for the hard work you've done and for this publication. Mm -hmm. um, and we are looking for more applications of, of this approach in RTB Foods Framework on other products as Dominique mentioned. So this approach should be the one applied to all product profiles or to, to most maybe boiled product profiles, let's say. Um, so we are looking for Christophe as a focal point for sensory analysis to to, to, to provide uh, support to the different teams. I think we're, the teams are waiting for this support, at least the most advanced teams uh, on, on, sensory, uh, um, on sensory analysis. So thanks uh, for joining today. Um, we have not fixed uh, the agenda yet for the next webinar. So we will be communicating with you as soon as we have, uh, we have scheduled um, the next uh, webinars, the next uh, presentations. And uh, of course, these presentations will be uploaded on our Slack platform so that everybody can access the recording. Thanks a lot to the team and uh, uh, we see you in two weeks and a happy new year again to everybody. <laughs>